if you're looking for a crossover, The Edge and Nautilus are both great rides. They're built on the same platform, available with the same engines and similar technology. It's when you get inside that the vehicles are different. And in this video, I'm going to compare the Ford Edge to the Lincoln Nautilus, going over the differences between the two rides to help you figure out if it makes sense to look at the Ford Edge or the more luxurious Lincoln Nautilus. Let's go for it. Starting off underneath the hood of these crossovers, they both have the same engine options. You'll find either a 2 liter turbo or a 2.7 liter turbocharged engine. The 2 liter pushes out 250 horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque, while the 2.7 liter kicks things up a notch at 335 horsepower and an impressive 380 pound feet of torque. So a solid amount of power in both, and you won't be disappointed when your foot goes down. Now, both engines are turbocharged, and you won't find the option for a hybrid in either vehicle. In the US, you'll find the Nautilus with standard front-wheel drive in pretty much every trim level, with intelligent all-wheel drive available in those trims. While in Canada, you only have the option for all-wheel drive for the Nautilus. So if you like the idea of front-wheel drive in the US, you could save yourself a few thousand dollars by opting to go that route. When looking at the Edge in both Canada and the US, it's only going to be available all-wheel drive. And that's a change that came in the 2022 model, so it's carried over to 2023 as well. Since these vehicles are built on the same platform with the same engine options, the towing capacity is the exact same between them. Both vehicles have the capability of pulling up to 3,500 pounds, regardless of which engine you're using. And that's also assuming that you have the factory tow option, since an aftermarket solution drops you to about 1,500 pounds max. When we look at the horsepower and torque specs of both vehicles, they're achieved using a premium fuel. However, the engines in both vehicles are okay to run with regular 87, so if you want the best possible performance out of the engines, you'd ideally want to use like a 91 or a 93 octane, but you're able to run just regular 87 without the risk of damaging anything. On the road, you'll find that both vehicles have acceptable fuel economy for their size, which is naturally going to drop a tiny little bit if you're a little bit of a lead foot. The standard Ford warranty for basic coverage is 3 year, 36,000 mile or 60,000 kilometer, with the powertrain warranty at 5 year, 60,000 mile or 100,000 kilometers. So it's pretty standard with most manufacturers. This is where the Lincoln equivalent is a little bit more enticing. The standard Lincoln warranty for basic coverage is 4 year, 50,000 mile or 80,000 kilometer, with the powertrain at 6 year, 70,000 miles or 110,000 kilometers. You also get Ford roadside assistance for the duration of your powertrain warranty, so that means 5 year, 60,000 miles or 100,000 kilometers. Now it covers things like mechanical breakdown, accident tow, battery boost, fuel delivery, winching, flat tire, and lockout. So the best way to think of it is almost like CAA or AAA, except it's tied to the vehicle and not to the driver. Lincoln coverage, on the other hand, is slightly more appealing. You get roadside assistance for the lifetime that you own the vehicle. You could have 10 years of driving and 200,000 miles on it, and if you're the original owner, you'll still be covered. If you sell your vehicle, the balance of the warranty is shifted to the new owner, with the next Lincoln owner getting roadside assistance for the duration of the Lincoln powertrain warranty. Now I do want to give a shout out to Puba for mentioning the additional warranty in my last video, comparing the Aviator and the Explorer, which you can check that video out down below, but I want to thank you again for that great comment. Since the Edge and Nautilus are built on the same platform, you'll find very similar technology in both vehicles. The Nautilus does have more standard tech though, while the Edge has most of what the Nautilus offers. When you move into higher trims like the Titanium 301A and the ST401A, you'll find things like adaptive cruise control, park assist, parking sensors, a hands-free liftgate, and wireless charging pad in both, depending on your built-in packages. But the Nautilus does offer nicer options though, such as a 360 camera and phone as a key. 
The first row seats are heated in both vehicles, and there's the option for ventilated first row and heated second row seats too. Uh, while they're both very comfortable, the Nautilus definitely takes the prize here. It has standard power driver and passenger seats, but also the option for 22-way perfect position massage chair seats for the first row. It's like driving in style, it's amazing. They both also feature Ford Lincoln's new Sync 4 media screen, which it's a portrait setup when you get into the edge, and it's landscape and slightly smaller inside of the Nautilus. A few things that I love about the new Sync 4 system are the enhanced voice assistant and wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It just looks so nice on these screens. If you're an audiophile, you are going to love what you find inside of the Nautilus. Like, don't get me wrong, the available 12 speaker Bang & Olufsen setup in the Edge is good. The 19 speaker Revel audio system in the Nautilus is just a step above. The Nautilus takes the crown here because of how quiet the cabin is. It features active noise control that analyzes and cancels outside sounds before it hits the cabin. That's paired with acoustic glass all around, a dual wall engine compartment, and dual exhaust. Now you're left with a very quiet ride and a great audio experience. Space-wise, these vehicles are the same. You have five seat configurations in both the Edge and the Nautilus, so two seats in the first row and three seats in the second row, with more than enough headspace for people that are you know, 6'3", 6'4", eh, maybe 6'5". The Edge has cloth or synthetic leather seats in most trims, with a leather insert in the ST trim level of the vehicle, and the Nautilus in comparison has leather seats in all trim levels with a very beautiful looking Venetian leather in the US exclusive black label trim. You'll find a panoramic sunroof standard in the Nautilus and either standard or optional in most trim levels of the Edge. But either way, it's really nice how much the roof opens things up inside of both of these vehicles. In the second row, you'll find cup holders in the back cushion of the bench seat, bottle holders on all four doors and assist handles, Cargo capacity is the same with both of them, and they both feature additional rear storage under a covered cargo area. Getting into the trunk is a little bit of a different story. In the Edge, you'll find either a manual, power, or foot-activated liftgate, whereas the Nautilus has a foot-activated liftgate in pretty much the whole vehicle lineup. Inside of the Nautilus, you'll find interior touches and finishes that are just a step above the edge. It has a digital cluster screen, piano key shifters, paddle shifters, and really nice interior highlights. It's a premium ride with beautiful features, and that leads us to the price. So the Edge is going to be cheaper than the Nautilus when looking just at the numbers. In Canada, we're between 43 and 64,000. In the States, you're between 35,000 and about 59,000. In comparison, the Nautilus is going to come in at around 63,000 and 83,000 in Canada, and 46 and 73,000 in the States. But the Nautilus will have more standard pieces of technology in comparison to the Edge. So if we were to build them out to get as close to matching, the numbers aren't really that far off. To get us a similar feature set, we would need to build out an Edge Titanium 301A with the Titanium Elite package and panoramic sunroof. In the Nautilus, we're looking at the Reserve 1 201A with all-wheel drive. So it's going to be available as an option in the US, but it's standard in Canada. So building it out like this, it's going to give us a two liter engine, all-wheel drive, leather seats, heated and cooled first row seats, heated second row seats, foot activated lift gate, a sunroof, and park assist. And in Canada, the edge will be 50,006 versus for the Nautilus is going to be 66. In the States, we're at 45.6 versus 59.6. So a little bit of a difference between them, but that's how we're going to get a vehicle built with a very similar feature set. But the Nautilus is also going to have a 360 camera, active noise cancellation, and slightly more technology with a premium interior. So a very similar build with a price difference of about 30% more when you look at the Nautilus. So do you go for the edge or the Nautilus? 
Honestly, it's going to depend on what you find important in your vehicles. Do you like style, better quality audio, and the best features like massage chair seats, using your phone as a key, or 360 camera? If that sounds like you, your attention should definitely be on the Nautilus. If you don't care about all the extra tech, style, or features, the Edge Titanium 301A or the ST401A would give you the same power and towing capability. But at the end of the day, they're both great rides with excellent power and capability. And that was a look at the differences between the Edge and the Nautilus. Hope you enjoyed the video and be sure to share if you think that someone else might find it helpful. Now, if you're looking for more of a dive into the Edge or Nautilus, you can also check out these videos and you can also check out the channel to find comparisons between the Aviator and a few other vehicles on top of that.